Good afternoon, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Silly Sondo again today. And today we're going to start with Fawn Braun's Big City Blues by Nick Healy and, the, and illustrated by Sahin Earcroak. Let's go ahead and start. Fawn Braun was not fond of farm life. She did not like the mess. She did not like the smell. She did not like the flat fields and dusty roads. Fawn's family lived on an old farmhouse on a dirt road. Most evenings, she stared out her bedroom window, watched the sun go down over the pasture, and heard cows moo in far-off places. The nearest house stood clear across the field, so far away that Fawn could barely see it. Her neighbor, little Larry Flatland, lived there. Fawn knew all about, far all about life in the big city. She had leaned in she had learned it at the movies. Every Saturday, Fawn went into town and brought a ticket at the theater. Most times, she brought along little Larry. On the screen, lights shined on busy streets. Horns blurred and traffic roared. People filled the sidewalks. They wore lovely dresses and handsome suits. They lived in tall towers, and at night, they could look out the window and see a whole big, beautiful place. On one Saturday, Fawn decided she would go live in the city. She would wear fancy dresses and walk on busy sidewalks and live in a tall tower. That's it, Larry, she said. I'm moving. What do you mean, Fawn Braun? Larry asked. He liked to say her whole name. To him, it sounded like a little poem. If you move, who will take me to the movies? Back home, Fawn told her parents about her plans. Don't be silly, Fawn, her father said. Dear, her mother said, you should be glad for what we have. We don't have much, Fawn said. We don't have tall buildings or tea parties. We don't have busy streets or bright lights or ballrooms. But we have sunshine and fresh air, her mother said. We have, we have, and starlight. But Fawn's mind was made up. If she couldn't move to the city, she would simply behave as if she lived there already. Gosh, Fawn Braun, where did you get those fancy clothes? Larry asked at the bus stop. Won't they get ruined at recess? No time for recess, Fawn said. I have a lunch date with the girls, and perhaps we'll stroll the grounds afterwards. Larry said, everyone has recess, Fawn Braun. It's the rule. You'll see, Fawn replied, replacing a coin in the palm of her puzzle driver. It's different for me. But Fawn... <clears throat> but Fawn found it wasn't easy being a city girl in the country. Her heels got stuck in the mud. Her gloves made milking difficult. And there was never a taxi cab when she needed one. Soon Fawn gave up. She went back to her old clothes and her old way of life. But she wasn't happy about it. What's the matter, Fawn? Braun Larry asked. I can't go to the city, Fawn replied. And that makes me blue. You don't look blue, Larry said, squinting at his friend. You look the same as ever. Not blue like the color, Fawn said. Blue, like sad. Larry got right to work. He had an idea. A good one. He went from the shop he went from shop to shop and door to door. He talked to everyone he knew. The old farmers, the men at the movie theater, the women at the filling station, all the kids from school, everyone. He rounded up all the stuff he needed, old cans of paint, bunches of wire, and string after string of colored lights. Fawn was still blue when the next Saturday came, but Larry wore a smile. When they walked out of the theater, the whole town had changed. Old farmers blew their horns and waved as if they drove down Main Street, which was clogged with traffic. The sidewalks were crowded, too. As people bustled in fancy clothes, they smiled and said hello to Fawn. Fawn and Larry had a tea at a fancy sidewalk cafe, and when they were finished, a taxi cab waited to whisk them home. At night, the cows mooed in far-off places as Fawn watched the sun go down over the pasture. The country was the same as always, until something amazing happened. In the distance, a thousand lights flickered on and glowed in the darkness. They looked just like the lights of a faraway city. 
Fawn smiled as she looked at the whole big, beautiful place. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed the story of Fawn Braun. Such a sweet story about Fawn living the country life, but wishing she'd be living in the big city. Boys and girls, remember your story maps? Go ahead and write your name at the very top. Your title of the book on the second line, which is Fawn Bronze, Big City Blues, up here. You can go ahead and pause it if you need to. And don't forget to fill in the rest. The characters on the first box. The setting on the second one, where the story took place. And then the beginning of the story, middle of the story, and the end. I will see you again back on tomorrow for another story map. Have a beautiful day, guys.